So what's being said to us is that we are on the outside looking in. 31 and 0 with 22 KOs, the former WBO 160 pound champion of the world, Peter Quillen, walked away from $1.42 million offered by Rock Nation Sports to take on Matt Vay Korobov in the Barclay Center. I'm going to round up the whole story for you as quickly um, as possible as far as how we got to this point today. So, Rock Nation, headed by Jay Z, he's the figurehead, he's the face of Rock Nation Sports. He's married to Beyonce. Beyonce had a lawsuit against Al Heyman, the promoter, manager, advisor of Peter K. Chocolate Quillen. Matt V. Karabov is an HBO fighter. Peter Quillen, Showtime Al Heyman, does not work with HBO. So, looking at that scenario, you're thinking, okay, well, that's one reason why right there, those two sides can't work together. So, we've heard... Time and time again, and most recently on an interview with IFL with Peter Quillen, where he stated that fans are on the outside looking in, and he's, he was talking as if he's the money guy, you know, as if he brings in a lot of money. Now, what Rock Nation was going to do for him and with that fight would have been good for the sport of boxing. I understand what Rock Nation was trying to do. They were trying to come into the business with a splash. Well, that was whether that was Jay Z trolling Al Heyman, trying to get an Al Heyman fighter to work for him, knowing Al Heyman and his wife got beef. I don't know, but when it comes to a fighter in this day and age, or any athlete in this day and age, giving back a championship, and it's not being stripped from them, it's not being taken because they failed drug tests. It's not, you know. I'm thinking, so you just, voila, the title's gone. So then I go to try to look at the landscape of the 160 pound division and I look at Gennady Gennadyevich Golovkin, the WBA Super World, the WBA champion, also the number one contender or soon to be full number one contender for the WBC um, 160 pound title that Miguel Cotto has. He's going to be taking on Martin Murray, meaning um, uh, Golovkin in February. I look at Bad Intentions Brain Bleed, Jermaine Taylor, the IBF champion, and I ask myself, okay. Golovkin is pretty much sewn up on HBO. So they're going to be fans that are going to say, well, he can just go over the show and listen. He's sewn up on HBO. You can count Golovkin and Peter Quill and not. It's not happening. Um, you have Danny Jacobs, who's the WBA champion. The regular champion is what they call it. The world champion. But Golovkin has the real recognized belt. You think about Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto only has about two fights left on his career. And is he going to fight Peter Quillen? And would that guarantee Peter Quillen makes $1.5 million, $1.6 million? Hmm. I just don't see Miguel Cotto fighting him. Then I go look at Danny Jacobs. I think about to myself, can Peter Quillen and Danny Jacobs sell out Madison Square Garden or the Barclay Center to constitute for him getting $1.4 million? Or maybe Al Heyman or whoever gave him, like, listen, take this $500,000 now. Drop that bell. We're sorry about that, but we're going to get you bigger fights. Now, when it comes to these boxers talking that boxing is a business, that makes me think, okay, well, they're going to find a way to get you money the easy way. So we might see more fights like Lucas Konechny, or we'll see maybe a situation with um, what happened with Diego Chavez, where we'll see um, Peter Quillen fight some guy getting like $1.8 million, fight someone that's only getting paid like forty, you know, $40,000, something like that. So... I think to myself, okay, well, by the time Andy Lee, who's the new WBO champion, Peter Quillen's belt, takes on Billy Joe Saunders, that will be almost one year in activity for Peter Quillen. Do you know that Peter Quillen, in 2014, fought one fight? He's only to, and, and at this point in his career, until up until I believe it was 2009, I believe he was injured. He didn't fight at all in 2009, but he has fought twice or more in each year of his professional career. So for him to fight and not be injured or anything just one time this year against, guess what? A fighter who was going blind. This is true. Listen, it's not a laughing matter, but Lucas Konechny, the guy that Peter Quillen fought in March or April, I believe it was April of um, this year, 2014, has very, very bad eye problems. Al Heyman knows this. Peter Quillen knew that. 
But yet, that's the only thing we can say Peter Quillen has given to us in 2014 outside of dropping his title. Now, I have to say, listen, I'm a Peter Quillen fan, but I cannot find any way to defend what he did because it's not like he came out and said, oh, yeah, well, I dropped that belt. I'm going after Golovkin or Kodo. It's realistic. He hasn't said that at all. So, therefore, we're left with no logical explanation or reason why this man walked away from $1.4 million in a world title, a coveted world title that Andy Lee is just smiling every day over. You know, a world title. I can't put it no better than that. A world title. You won't have Scottie Pippen giving one of his rings back and leaving the Chicago Bulls in 95 and no shit like that. So... It's 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 really a situation where I'm thinking, OK, wait a minute. OK, Peter Quillen. So you're going to fight Jermaine Taylor. There's no guarantee you're going to beat him. Jermaine Taylor has been a little fucked up lately. If you check out his Instagram and his social media, I don't know what's going on with that guy. But you beat him. Is that going to give you one point four million or is that going to not? Is that going to stop the fans from not booing you? You know, if you do win, you know, it doesn't help that his last fight he was booed. You know, it doesn't help that the fight before that he was booed against Gabriel Rosado. So I'm thinking to myself, well, who is there to blame? Do you blame the fighter or do you blame the management? Is Peter Quilla in a situation where he could have told Al Heyman, no, I'm not dropping my belt. No, I'm not walking away from that money. No, because what would that what would that have involved? That would involve Peter Quillen going against Al Heyman, Peter Quillen being put on the shelf because Al Heyman contracts are meant to keep you in Al Heyman contracts and the fighters don't leave from Al Heyman contracts. It's set up to where if you win a certain amount of fights or get a belt or get a certain amount of money, then your contract is automatically renewed. But people don't talk about that. But in fact, what I'll do is I'll post a, con um, a link to the contract below. Now, is it legal? I mean, is it legal? Of course it's legal. But it's illegal to a certain extent where when you have the WBO president himself, the WBO president himself reaching out to Senator John McCain, like basically saying, I'm paraphrasing, look, we got to do something about this shit. We got this Al Heyman guy running around here and it says manager, promoter, but it's no definition for what an advisor could do. That's like literally in a Muhammad Ali like the, an act, there's no definition of what an advisor can or cannot do. That's why he can be a promoter. That's why he can be a manager. That's why he uses conduit um, 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 promotional faces like the Bella Promotions, Warrior Boxing, you know, stuff like that, Golden Boy, you know, to, to promote his fights. But they're just the face. He is the fighters and he puts the events together. He's the one that has the clout with the networks and the arenas and such and such. So, I'm just trying to find a way, you know, as a boxing fan, that Peter Quillen can get out of this situation as far as getting, getting to the good graces of fans. And the only way he could do that is to fight Golovkin, because I think, okay, all right, he could fight at 168 pounds. You see him now, he's walking around a little heavy. He started his career at 168, meaning above the 154-pound division. So, I mean, one, above the 160-pound limit. So I said, okay, what if he fights at 168? Maybe meet a Don Stevenson and he catch weights. A little too big for him. You know, hell, maybe calls Fraud, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., Anthony um, Durrell, Andre Durrell. But realistically, he's going to be remembered for what if you lose? What if you lose your next fight? If Peter Quillen loses his next fight, just like Danny Garcia... Just like um, Adonis Stevenson, just like Deontay Wilder, just like Adrian Broner. If you lose your next fight, the fans are literally going to be done with you. They're going to be done with you. So, I think I'm saying like risk over reward. You drop a world championship, something that you may not ever attain again. Oh, I guess maybe Al Heyman's going to make his own belt. He's going to make his own 160-pound title and say, look, you're going to be the first ever 160-pound Heyman champion ever. Here, the belt got that fucking Al Heyman face with the teeth when he looking to the side. But listen, I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live, realcombatmedia.com, and I cover every single major fight live, boxing news, rumors, gossip. And um, 2015 is here, and I can't wait. I can't wait. December the 29th, 2014, I am T-Street Controversy. Please subscribe.